Welcome back, Legends. I hope you're all fantastic. On today's installment of 5 Minute Tones, we're going to look at what is still probably my favorite modifier trick to do on an Axe FX3, FM9, or FM3. In fact, you can do this on the Axe FX2 and AX8 as well if you're still using one of those devices. It is a trick using the pitch follower to control the amount of gain coming from the amplifier as well as the overall mix of some wet effects. It's really easy to dial in if you've got the factory presets installed. Just go to factory preset number 343 on your Axe FX3, FM9, or FM3, and it brings up this preset called Pitch Follower that I actually made. And I'll let you hear what it does. I'll play down low. You'll hear a pretty dry, distorted sound. And as I play up higher, you're going to get a blend of wet effects, some delay and some reverb on there, blended in smoothly. I'm not using any external pedals. I don't have an expression pedal doing any of this. I'm just playing the guitar. We get this. <laughs> There are some very subtle reverb and delay trails left on there, but playing down low is really dry, playing up high is really wet, and it's so much easier with all that extra distortion and sustain there. Let's take a look at how we would go about setting that up on a patch that isn't this one. I'm just going to break down this patch. What I've done is I've set up one of my favorite amps, the USA Mark IV lead mid-gain model over here. The way I like it dialed in, like a real boogie Mark IV, keep the bass and mid-range low, crank up the treble, crank up the gain and overdrive, and I've got this EQ curve happening over here. But the trick is to map the pitch follower modifier to the input trim. And you can see I've set a minimum value of around 0.5 and a maximum value close to five over here. Attack and release are close to 30 milliseconds each. Basically what this is doing is it is detecting the notes coming out of my guitar and is turning them into control signals. So the low note on my guitar, which at the moment is a low D in drop D, would get mapped somewhere close to this 0.5 value, which would be multiplying the amount of gain going into the amp. As I play higher, I get a higher control signal and that gets mapped to this multiplier here. So if I turn the delay and the reverb off, we'll just hear more gain from the guitar and amp and the cab combo. <laughs> I've simply done a similar trick with the delay and the reverb. I've set up my reverb so that at its wettest, it would be at 45%. Then I have mapped the pitch follower modifier again, this time to the input gain control over here. And I've given it a little bit of a parabolic curve over here. So you can see minimum is really close to, but not actually at zero. Maximum is at 100% over here. I've just tweaked the midpoint over here. Attack and release, I've set to 10 milliseconds each. So they're quite fast to update. And I've also done the same thing with the input gain on the delay over here. You can see pretty much similar settings, slightly different attack and release over there. I've also mapped the pitch follower to the feedback control over here so that as I go higher, not only do I get more delay mix, I get more delay repeats. Now I might tweak that a little bit and bring this value up a little bit higher. And I've got the attack and the release at 150 milliseconds each over there. Let's just hear the reverb on its own, then I'll bring the delay in with this feedback and input gain trick over here. <laughs> Thank you. 
slight variation on that, I've used the new 5153 Stealth Red Ant model. With the input trim, I've used a slightly higher minimum and maximum value over here. I've used the same settings in the reverb, but I've swapped over to the awesome sounding gold plate reverb. And then I'm going to be using the 2290 with modulation for the delay, I'll play you all out with this example. Let me know how you like this in the comment section below. Again, it's a factory preset if you don't want to muck around with the modifiers. Otherwise, hopefully I have shown you a pretty straightforward way to set this up with any of your patches. Essentially, you can go from a super cool dry rhythm tone to the wettest, dirtiest lead you've ever had in your life. You don't need any external controllers. The pitch follower is just magic. And it is one of those things that when I play with it, I'm reminded of how amazing the Axe FX is. Have a great day and I'll see you all next time.